Hey awesome people of YouTube, welcome back to another build guide. I apologize for not having a stream yesterday, but we'll be doing a stream today on 4 p.m. and tomorrow 4 p.m. Eastern. So the build will be on Storm Sorcerers. So like a storm uh, storm from X-Men, if you guys remember. But before we get fully started, if you want to help support the channel, you can do so by leaving a like, comment, subscribing. It will help tremendously. You can also join Discord to see where I go live and the see what videos uh, are out there and you can also help suggest the videos that you guys want to see but with that said let's get started in the video so we are doing a uh, storm sorcerers build right so what storm sorcerers is it's pretty self-explanatory right? we're going to be taking um six levels in storm sorcerer and six levels in tempest domain cleric so we're going to start out with a sorcerer right the races you can go is Wood Elf, Wood Half Elf, they're really good. You can go with a High Elf uh, and High Half Elf. If you get Joe, um, also another one is the, the Dwarf for more health. But it's, at the end of the day, it's up to you. Another good one is a Human. So once you pick this, your, um, excuse me, your cantrips are pretty easy. Definitely want to take Fireball. Unless you already have half half, which at that point you get one for free. So if you have that, you take something else. But you also want to take Ray of Frost, Shocking Grasp. You can take Light, which can be helpful in a few situations. So if you have Fireball, you can take that. And, excuse me, another great one is Minor Illusion, which can help in a few situations to get a group of enemies on the ledge or just get together so you can just do your massive attack. We'll take Minor Illusion. For your spells, take Chromatic Orb, because it does a lot of damage, 3d8, you have Thunder, Lightning, Fire, all of them. And for your other spell, well, take Thunder Wave, because it 2d8, but it also can push enemies. So if you throw Minor Illusion, get them close to the edge, you can Thunder Wave, eliminating enemies pretty consistently. Now, for your subclass, as I said, you can go Draconic Bloodline because you can get Sashiri Slaughter, which is not bad. You can get Draconic Resilience, which you get your base armor of 13. You get more hit points. And you can pick your Draconic Ancestor, which means at level 6, you do more damage. But we're going to go with Storm Sorcery because starting from right away, as soon as you cast level 1 spell or higher, you can use Fly as a bonus action till the end of your turn without receiving opportunity attack, which can be massive. Especially at the start. Right, so pick that. Now, for your points. Well, you're going to get 17 to Charisma, because that's not bad, right? Um, you're also going to get 14 in Wisdom, because you're also going to be a Cleric, so you might use some Cleric uh, spells, which will improve it with Wisdom. For Constitution, we're going to go with this. Next day, we're gonna go a little less. We're gonna like this 17 charisma, 14 wisdom. Again, because you're gonna have six levels of cleric. 10 intelligence if you want to. If you don't, you can go like this, you know? But having the 10 intelligence will allow you to pass certain uh, arcana checks. 14 constitution because you wanna be a bit tanky. 12 dexterity because, well, it'll help you with a little bit of armor class and initiative of 11 which is or plus one sorry which is not great but you know till later you will uh, be this so the reason why we're going charisma 17 is because you're gonna get anti ethel hair so you get charisma of 18 then you go with ability score improvement or your side to 20 and then with the hat that we're wearing okay birthright you get to 22. now for your skill proficiencies you pick whatever you want for your background Pick Urchin or whatever you want, it doesn't that truly matter. But for skill proficiencies, the best ones would be the ones that are charisma based, you know, like intimidation, deception, persuasion. Those ones are charisma, so you already get a plus, so you get a little bit more, right? That's level one. Pretty easy, just in not a lot, just throw your spells out. Now at level two. Maybe I think you will go into, well, a sorcerer's level 2, but no. We take 
our first level of cleric. The reason why is because whew, you get some really nice goodies. Some really good cantrips. So, for cantrips, you want to take resistance because it'll make you, you know, it'll help you with your saving throws if you want to. Uh, for other one is guidance because guidance is just too amazing. It gives you plus 1d4 bonus to ability checks and can make it between where you pass or not pass, you know. For your other cantrip, don't need Sacred Flame, it's not necessary. I'd recommend Thermoturgy, so you get advantage on Intimidation and Performance checks. Now, for your domain, you're not gonna go Trickery, you're not gonna go Light, you're not gonna go Life, or Knowledge, or Nature, or War, you're gonna go into Tempest, because you get Wrath of the Storm as a reaction to strike back at an attacking creature dealing 2 to 16 Lightning damage or Thunder damage, the target takes half the damage on a successful uh, saving throw. You also get Marsh Weapon, you know, and Heavy Armor Proficiency. You also get another Thunder Wave and Fog Cloud, but Thunder Wave we will be moving away from that. So for your spells, Inflict Wound is not great, so we're not gonna really go with that. No, we're definitely gonna go with Create Water. Guiding Bolt, because Guiding Bolt will give other uh, of our people a chance, uh, an advantage. And another good one is Sanctuary. You or an ally cannot be targeted until you attack or harm another creature, which can be really, really amazing. And it's a bonus action, right? Now, for level 3, we're gonna stick with Cleric again. <laughs> Because we'll get another more spell slots, but we'll get Turn Undead and Destructive Wrath. Destructive Wrath is when you roll Thunder or Lightning damage, you can use your Channel Divinity to deal maximum damage instead, which is massive. Because we are going to be dealing pretty much Lightning damage or Thunder. Right? So for spells, you can grab Mage Armor. You know, uh, which I don't have, I forgot. My bad. You don't grab mage armor. You grab shield of faith. Mage armor is from the sources. That is my bad. You know, but getting shield of faith it gives you two more to armor class and until long rest. So it can be really helpful. And this concentration, which is constitution based. Now for your level four, you're not gonna go to clerk yet. You're gonna go back into sorcerer because you get meta magic. Now for your spells. Mage armor. No. No. Excuse me. Now for your meta magic spells, you go twin spells. You know spells that only target one creature can target an additional creature. And you go extended spell. Double the duration of conditions, summons, and services caused by spells. And I'll tell you why you take that because creator destroy water. And a few other spells. Now, for your next level, you stick with the sources, so you get level 5, because you get another beautiful meta magic. But, for this level, you take... Well, you take Shatter. If I can find it, which I don't remember where it's at, but you can also take Misty Steps to help you reposition a whole person, which, you know... Hold, uh, makes them unable to move, act or react, and they take critical hit from melee range. You can take invisibility, but that's not amazing. You know, uh, oh, here's the shatter you can take because it's standard damage. Oh. I'll help. Now, for your other meta magic spell, take Quicken Spell, which means spells that cost an action cost a bonus action instead. It can be really helpful. Now, for your level 6 or level 4 sorcerer. Well, you get new feet, more HP, sorcery points, spell slot, cantrip, and spells. Now for your cantrip, well, you take poison spray if you want to, but you can also take acid splash or any other um, cantrip. That's up to you. Now for spells, well, you can take, if I can find it, there you go. Gust of wind. You know, summon a strong wind that clears all clouds and pushes targets five meters, forcing them off balance. They can be really nice. 
Another one is... Where is it at? I can't remember. It's Phantasmal Force. There you go. Deals damage to a creature each turn. The type of damage changes to the last type the creature suffered. Which can be pretty good. But again, also the Misty Steps and Whole Person are pretty good. I like to take Misty Steps because it allows me to reposition out of danger to get to a higher ground or just get out of being surrounded. Right now for your ability score improvement, you want to take Elemental Adept. Ooh, and a wound a little too much. There you go. Elemental Adept because your spells and attacks have no resistance to damage type of your choice. When you cast the spells of that type, you cannot roll a 1. And you're not going to go Acid, Cold, Fire or Thunder. You're going to go Lightning. So your attacks ignore resistance to lightning and they deal and they cannot roll a one, which is massive. So no matter what you pretty much you will not suffer critical miss. No. Now for the next level. I also have you stick with the sorcerers and you get ooh, you get some goodies. You get a beautiful lightning bolt. That's where the tanker the build fully gets online. It's because you throw a create water and then you do a lightning bolt. And because enemies are in the water. They take double damage from lightning damage and cold damage. So that 8d6 gets doubled. So that's pretty massive. Right? That's it for your pretty much level 5. Now for level 6, you stick with the sorcerer again. Because you get more spells. Sorcerer points, spell slot, new spell, Heart of the Storm, which when you cast a spell of level 1 or higher that deals lightning or thunder damage. Cause a small local storm, all enemies within 6 meters take 3 lightning or 3 thunder damage, which can be massive. Cause you may can take a little bit more damage, which can be pretty good. You also get Heart of the Storm resistance. You're resistant to lightning and thunder damage. You also get Call Lightning, which means lightning strikes all targets within uh, range. Then for 10 turns, you can call down lightning again without expending a spell slot. So if you have 2 spell slots, you throw your lightning bolt and then you can call lightning. And as long as you still can uh, still keep concentration, you can reposition it for 10 turns. Massive. Guess the wind, sleep, uh, sleep storm, created the shore water, thunder wave, you know. Now for your spell. Um uh, the, the great ones are fireball, you know, if you want to, another good one is hypnotic pattern. Protection from energy can be good, but not necessarily. I would take Fireball because Fireball is just too good. Now for replacement spells. You don't need Thunder Wave. You know? Because, uh, well, you already have a better one. So for that, I would take something like a Witch Bolt. Because it's a level 1 spell slot and it links. It's not a bad one, you know. Now, for your level 9, you're not gonna stick with Sorcery, you're gonna back into Click, because you get more spell slots and you get some other cool spells. Right? So, for here, honestly, the best one will probably be Silence. The way you can pretty much uh, eliminate their spell casters. From the decent air, you can make them reposition. No, they are immune to thunder damage, but you're doing lightning, so it does not truly matter as bad, you know. But remember, you're keeping created the short water. Now, for level 10, for level 4 cleric, you get feet, you get more stuff like that. Cantrips, again, that's up to you. Blade Ward is not bad. Same with Produce Flame, but it's and whatever, right? For your feet, you take ASI and you get plus two charisma because right now it says 19, but if I had hex, hex hair on this character, I'd be 20, which can be pretty, pretty good, right? Now, boom, but 19 charisma. Now, at level five cleric, we get destroy and dead. Whenever you successfully turn on that creature, it also takes 4 to 24 radiant damage, which can be pretty amazing. So, for your spells, take level warning. Because in, you, you can do lightning damage, thunder damage, you can put them to sleep, fire damage, all types of different damages. 
which can be pretty disgusting. Alright, and for your last level, level 12, you get the Thunderbolt Strike. When you deal lightning or thunder damage to a creature that, that is large or small, you can also push it to 3 meters, which can be helpful. Alright, now for this spell, honestly, it's up to you. You can take Remove Curse, you know, you can take Daylight, Bestow Curse, it is up to you. Now, that's pretty much the leveling. Now, let's talk about the gear. Some of the gear I have on me, some of them I don't. So, for starting off, you want to use Spell Sparker for your weapon. Because it allows you to deal... Uh, whenever, you de whenever you deal damage with a spell cantrip, you gain two lightning charges. You also want to use Gloves of Build Bel Belligerent, which is what I have. When the word deals thunder, li uh, thunder, lightning, or radiant damage, you inflict two turns of reverberation. And reverberation gives them minus one uh, to strength, dexterity, or constitution saving throw. And when they have five turns of reverberation, they take one to four thunder damage, possibly fall prone. Okay. When you also use Lightbringer for your uh, helmet, when uh, you get HP when you get lightning charges. For your amulet, the blast pendant, because when, uh, whenever you have lightning charges, you do more damage with cantrips. Your next lightning spells or cantrips deal additional lightning damage equal to your remaining lightning charges, which can be amazing with the pair of boots. When the wearer stands on the water during combat, it becomes electrified. If the wearer starts their turn on electrified service, they gain three lightning charges. But electrified can be bad because you get electrocuted. But if you have sparks, well, you cannot be electrocuted. And you gain lightning to resistance. Or lightning resistance. You also want to have Ring of Infused Elemental, you know. But that's for early game. Once you get into late game, you definitely want to use like a Ring of Reaction. You can be paralyzed or restrained, you know. If you have Absolute Brand, Ring of Absolute, you can bypass Thunder Wave from the, your spells and stuff and get it from this. It is once per short rest, but it can be helpful, right? For your cloaks, for starting off when you can, cloak of protection is nice for armor class and saving throws. But later, the thunder skin cloak is pretty good. When a creature with a vibration deals damage to you, they need to pass as constitution saving throw or they become dazed. Right? For boots, if you don't want to use the water skins, you can also use the disintegrating night walkers. You can be webbed, entangled, and snared, you can sleep on grease or ice, and you get free mist steps. You know, another good one are space boots. For the armor, almost any armor right off the bat can help, be it light or heavy or medium. But you can also, if you are getting a little bit into close quarters, Helldusk armor in Act 3 is amazing. But if not, you can use Robo the Weave. You gain plus one to spell save, DC, and spell attack rolls. And when you succeed a saving throw, you gain uh, one to six health points. And it gives you plus two to armor class. So you have 17 armor class. Right. For helmet, as we talked, Birthright. Just amazing. Gives you plus two charisma. So you see, I have 21, but if I have anti other hair, 22 is what I would have. For shield, if you want to rock that, Avaconia's Walking Fortress, which gives you plus three armor class, which is why I have 17. You also gain advantage on saving throws against spells, and you have, yeah, uh, spells attack rolls against you have disadvantage, which is pretty cool. So you don't want to uh, fill your saving throws. Right. You also get a reflective shelf and warding bond. For your weapon, Mar Marco Kesh Kier. I butchered it. You gain plus one to bonus save, uh, plus one to spell save and attack rolls. You also get arcane battery, you know, which allows you to uh, pretty much uh, get a free spell that doesn't go spell slots. You also get Karashka Favor, so that's pretty good. For ranged weapons, I wouldn't recommend Gunther Mail. I forget to switch it out. The better ones would be, uh, if I can find it, which I don't have, is um, the bow that gives you plus one initiative. Because since you're low on initiative, you only get plus one, you're gonna be not attacking, uh, you're not gonna be in attacking order uh, as like close. 
Another good bow is uh, hunting bow, short bow, because what it gives you, it gives you advantage against monstrosity enemies. But I don't have it on me. Ooh. But the bow that gives you intuition or initiative, sorry, not intuition, will help you quite a bit in attacking first, which will make a huge difference. Getting plus one initiative is a lot. But there we go. I found it. There you go. Bow awareness. Now, since you only have plus one initiative, having plus two will let you go a little bit closer to the front. So you can dump your stuff and possibly wipe the enemies. So be mindful of that. But as that's it, that is it for this build. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like, comment, subscribe. And I'm going to show you real quick what you can do with this before we end the video. So. I got my spell slots. We're going to back up a little because remember, you don't want to have your uh, people in the water. So you want to start out with create water. Right? The level one spell, as you can see, will cover all of them in this circle. But if you use, let's say, level six, it is a more massive circle. Right? But it does use uh, level six. So we'll just throw it like this for now. As you can see, a lot of people are in the water. You don't necessarily need this big, but all I'm saying is the higher the level, the more um, area will cover. So we're going to utilize this. And as you can see, it does 5 to 60, and it's a wish bolt. That's a wrong spell. Lightning bolt. There you go. We're going to do 10 to 60. So we do this, and we'll get part of the wound. As you can see, we did quite a bit of damage. A lot of them are not necessarily shocked, but as you can see, this is taking quite a bit of damage. Unfortunately, the, war <laughs> the water didn't get electrified, but these enemies are. And as you can see, without the bow of awareness, actually, I don't know if we do have it. Yeah, without it, as you can see, our Shadow Heart, which is our build, is towards the end. But you pretty much want to throw in the water on the enemies and then electrify them. Right? But that is it for this build. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like, comment, subscribe. I hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.